Welcome to Pressure Points. Our topic is WWDC. And while there were several layers to the event, I'll jump right into the pressure point, which is, will the new AI features be enough to motivate Apple's base to upgrade their hardware more frequently and therefore allow Apple to exceed estimates over the next few years? And so let me take a couple steps back, stay within that pressure point is when I previewed the event a few days ago and talked about Siri being the pressure point, one piece that I missed was that these new AI features are gonna require you to have an iPhone 15 Pro uh, or later, and also on the Mac and iPad side, an M1 chip or later. And so effectively, 85% of the devices out there will not be able to run these experiences. And so that creates this question, which is, will the features be enough to get people to get excited? And before I jump into why I believe that they'll be enough to cause a, a better than expected cycle over the next few years, some context is that it's true that all the features that we saw today are features that we have seen over the past year and demoed by OpenAI and Microsoft, and we've seen Gemini and all of their examples. So while this is nothing new for those of us who are following this, most people are not following this. Most people have heard of AI, have maybe episodically used it, but in the case of integrating this within Apple's devices, it gives an opportunity first for these generative experiences to be more tailored to people. They refer to being personalized AI. And that's because some of those features run on Apple's small language models on device and in their private cloud, which is allows you to do things on your personal data. For example, use your emails to index and be able to search those through AI, compose emails, do proofing. You could have iMessage uh, different features, whether it's generating uh, different experiences for what you're sending out in message or being able to organize messages and in photos to be able to better organize your photos, search photos and uh, generate and make adjustments to photos. So all those, uh, that generative AI experience, that small language model experience is powered by Apple. And that's something that users would have never been able to do unless Apple rolled in this integration. The second reason why I think it's exciting is that they're really taking the friction out of using AI. I oftentimes get asked, Eugene, you're so excited about AI. How do I actually experience it? People don't know you have to go out and sign up to Gemini or, or GPT and, and, and get an account. In the case of Apple, they're just going to make all these products run seamlessly. They're not charging for them explicitly, but they are making them run uh, seamlessly. In the case of uh, the more advanced pieces they're doing, they also will allow you to summon GPT and Siri and through other experiences like doing emails and for generative text. Uh, but to do that, you don't have to set up a OpenAI account, a GPT account. You can just uh, go and it just, it works. And so that piece that Apple does so well of making technology easy for us to use, I think that is gonna be a moment for people to get uh, wanting these new devices. And again, I think that's gonna take time for this to build. The initial, there's gonna be a wave of people who get excited about initially, once they get those devices in their hands, call it the December quarter this year, they'll show them to their friends and I think people will increasingly get excited about upgrading. And so that's the pressure point. I wanna uh, jump into a couple more topics. One is related to the technology piece. And so, as I mentioned, there are some pieces of Apple's AI experiences that are powered by their small language model. That's a three billion parameter model, three B as in boy billion. And that is important because in context to the GPT model that they're integrating with, which is likely a, a one trillion, uh, T as in tango, one trillion parameter model. That's a large language model. Apple is using a small language model, but these are night and day in terms of how advanced they are. And so they both come together to create these AI generative experiences. But when you think about kind of the, substance of the most exciting parts of what AI can do, you really are gonna to have to opt into what's going on with, uh, opt into GPT, uh, which Apple's gonna make it easy to do that. It does beg a question that I've had in my mind about what uh, Apple's future is in AI 
And ultimately, do they have control of their destiny? This is the same question that I have regarding Microsoft and Amazon and their need to partner with third parties. But I just want to point out that there's a pretty big distinction about the the what the power of these models are. But again, from the consumer perspective, they're really not going to care. They're just going to be able to do some things that they've never been able to do. And I think that will be positive for the upgrade cycle. And I would be remiss not to mention that while well, Siri kept her its name, it ultimately got a huge upgrade and is going to do a lot more in part through their small language model, but also you'll be able to opt in and do Siri with GPT and capitalize on that bigger model. And so I think the Siri experience, not just through voice, but they have a text option too, is going to be something that people are going to get excited about. So I think there's a lot of reason to be enthusiastic over the next three years about what's going to happen with device growth, not just iPhone, but Mac and iPad too. The last piece I wanted to talk about is just some historical context. And shares traded off 2% on this. Of course, they've been up 15% over the past month. Uh, well, the NASDAQ has been up 5%, so it's understandable there's uh, one natural buying the rumor, selling the news. But I think that today was a, a big event, and I would put it as big of an event as the iPhone coming out, which may sound like I'm out of touch by making that comparison. But if you look at what has come out since the iPhone has come out, kind of in reverse order, we have Vision Pro, we have in 2019, Apple TV Plus, Arcade and News Plus, and then uh, rewinding further, 2015, Apple Watch, we had the iPad, we had the App Store. That's basically has been kind of the, con the, the, the contour of product announcements from Apple over the last, call it, 15 years. And back in 2007, the iPhone, what really made it special was touch. And what that did is allow the phone, not just to be a phone, but to become a computer in your pocket and really opened up this whole concept of the whole app ecosystem and really doing so much more than just making a phone call or sending a text message or taking pictures uh, like you could do with a flip phone. And I think AI has that same power to really fundamentally change the types of things that we do on our phone, much more advanced things that didn't get into today, but allowing third parties to tie into apps to do more advanced things for us, uh, reconcile a utility bill, to go and book different events, organize different calendars between multiple people. There's so much you can do. I think it fundamentally will change how we think about that computer in your pocket. And so I do not believe that Apple shares are going to go up 4,000% in the next 15 years as they did over the last 15, but I do believe this is the most significant announcement since the iPhone. And I'll leave it there. On behalf of Pressure Points, I'm Gene. Bye for now.